The inspiration of our work uh, on sustainable modernity in Scandinavia comes from the evolutionary thought, especially David Stone Wilson and his colleagues from uh, the Evolutionary Institute. What we found seductive about uh, their approach is their uh, emphasis on the role of cooperation and pro-social uh, behavior in the evolution of human and animal species. We've been all misreading Darwin, they say. Darwin is not about might is right. Uh, his message is that uh, the human evolution and the most successful species succeed not because they're selfish genes, but because of, the, of their skill in collaborating with one another and their uh, caring for one another. One of the most famous examples of uh, collaborative defense is found among the musk oxen. When attacked by wolves, they form a circle with the calves in the middle and the horns facing out. This collaborative behavior allows them to fence off other attackers. And in this way, they survive in a hostile world. Now, what does this mean? At one level, between the oxen, there is collaboration. But at another level, between the oxen and the wolves, there is competition. And the oxen are so much better off because they collaborate. A good analogy in a human society is actually a football game, where a team which consisted only of egos such as Maradonas or Ronaldos would lose abysmally to a team that knows how to play in tandem. In other words, while selfish Ronaldos beat ordinary players in one-to-one -one tacklings, a team of cooperative players will beat a team of selfish prima donnas. So what does this have to do with the Nordic model? Firstly, it stands in contrast to the neoliberal model, exemplifying crude Darwinism, where competition runs all the way through, between individuals, between firms and between societies. In ideal socialism, on the other hand, the ideal is organized collaboration on all levels. Now, it has been argued that the Nordic model is a middle ground between neoliberalism and socialism. As we see it, however, the Nordics combine them, but with full collaboration at one level and sharp competition at another. In this way, they can combine a competitive advantage of collaboration. Let's take the Norwegian petroleum economy. The basis of its success is the development of a highly competitive and technically advanced offshore industry. But the super profits from oil extraction have been collectively appropriated by society and put into the petroleum fund. So here again we have the special combination of collaboration and competition at different levels that characterizes the Nordic model. Now you see the core question in our evolutionary scheme of things is how has it come about that the Nordic countries are such masters of collaboration? And this is where culture comes in. We argue that although the Nordic societies differ economically and politically, they share a common and very strong moral culture which has for ages promoted a pro-social cooperative mindset. The cooperative habits of the heart have been transmitted by folk takes, family values, national literatures, political visions and the models of cultural heroes. It is enough to think of the Norwegian Askeladden, the Swedish Pippi Langstrom and the Finnish Mummy Trolls to see the emphasis on the value of teamwork. Skilled in the art of teamwork, the Nordics can successfully compete internationally while representing some of the world's most open economies. Of course, the Nordic model is not without challenges, such as uh, globalization, digitalized economy, uh, or immigration. There are many clashes and collisions. However, at the end uh, of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st, the Nordics have managed to create what we call a sustainable modernity and well-being societies. So for me, the most interesting feature of the Nordic model is that um, uh, Norway has scaled up 
what takes place more or less naturally in small groups. If you look at small groups, then we really evolved by natural selection to live in small groups and to cooperate in small groups. It's there that it's easy to hold each other in check, uh, to be known by our actions. The most interesting thing for me was how much the Nordic model is geared towards a way of doing politics rather than a way of producing distinct policies. The focus on, on, um, on compromise, on negotiations, tying stakeholders to the eventual outcome makes up for a high level of competence, a high level of trust and a high level of stability across the Nordic countries. So that while policies varies over time and between the countries, the way of doing politics is quite similar. I think in terms of the gender equality regime, we have developed a rather uh, unique model of work-life balance that uh, encourages people and parents to be both active in uh, working life and to have a fi family life at the same time and it goes for women as well as for men. I think the most interesting feature and one that's really misunderstood by an international audience is that the welfare system is not just a social safety net. Uh, it's, a, it's a way of doing capitalism. Norway is a country in particular that is, exposes itself to international competition. It's an export-driven economy. Uh, and that means that Norwegian capitalism is quite dynamic. You have firms and sectors that go out of business. And then you do have, you have, a, you do have a social safety net that catches these people um, when they're ejected from the labor market. But when you have, uh, you also have active labor market policy that makes sure that they get education, that they're retrained, sometimes even that they're moved uh, to sectors that are really active and productive. The Nordic combination of collaboration and competition can be quite paradoxical at times. And we see this in their climate policies. On the one hand, with their large forests, they have more than sufficient biocapacity to absorb the emissions from their small populations. So they could, in principle, just relax. Nevertheless, the Nordics are still eager supporters of international collective climate action, and they even like to see themselves as front runners. So for the Nordics, collaborative climate responsibility and competitive economic growth have to go hand in hand. So I think that while the system has many strengths and should certainly be viewed as a model, there are very important challenges. Um, I think that there's a, a problem with its political sustainability, as we've seen. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that the Nordic model was something that was necessarily born directly from the social democratic imagination, but social democrats played a very large role in, in making its construction possible. And we've seen social democratic parties decline uh, throughout Europe and uh, also in Scandinavia. Um, and so I think that uh, to the extent that the social democratic parties underperform in elections and we see the rise of neoliberal um, center-right and right-wing parties. I think one danger, which is both internal and external, is what we call the neoliberal narrative. Uh, neoliberal thought it basically uh, makes, seems to make a certain kind of sense and seems to justify forms of individualism which are in fact uh, a toxic to society. Another difficulty which is growing is the increased polarization uh, both within societies and between societies. The Nordic model and the process of the Nordic model is collaborative and cooperative and as the polarization increases, as the hostility between parties, between ideologies increases, if that is brought into the Nordic model we will not be able to make the compromises to get the good policies that we have so far. To an unprecedented extent, the younger generation in the United States is very interested in the Nordic model, in good measure because of Bernard Sanders' very successful campaign where he almost won the presidential primary. And he has motivated more young people than since I've seen in the 1960s when I was a younger person myself. I think younger people have stayed involved even if they aren't necessarily uh, for the reason of Bernie Sanders. And there have been a number of younger people who have been elected 
are running on social democratic platforms in the democratic primary to a higher degree than ever before. There is also the fact that most younger people in the United States don't find the word socialism or social democracy abhorrent in any way. There's a sense in which all nations need the same ingredients, the same core design principles to function well. In that sense, the success of Norway can be exported by exporting those core design principles. But every nation has its own history. Every nation has its own mechanisms whereby these design principles are implemented. And often that cannot be exported. And so it's a matter of learning from Norway and other successful countries, and then thinking about how the active ingredients can be adopted.